Today, I'm going to show you how to create any 3D environment using procedural generation in Blender. Your favorite games and movies are already using procedural generation to create large open worlds. Now that magic has trickled down to independent studios and 3D hobbyists like myself using tools like Blender. By the way, if you don't want to follow along with this tutorial, you can get an improved version of what I'm about to show you in my Director 3D plugin, along with a bunch of other useful procedurally generated templates and effects for video creators. Link to that is at the top of my description if you're interested. So anyways, today I'm gonna to show you a basic setup. It'll allow you to control the basics like density and materials. I'll show you how to set up weight paintings. You can draw specific objects on your environment wherever you want them. And I'll even talk a bit about unique generation like animated crowds or cars. All right guys, so let's get started within Blender. First thing you're going to need is some assets. For most of these, I just downloaded some models from Sketchfab as an example. Of course, you guys can model yourself. I highly recommend that if you want to customize the assets that are going to be generated. In this example, I'm going to create a little forest. Uh, I got these assets from the Quixel Bridge plugin for Blender. So I'll leave a link below if you're interested in setting that up. So download or create the assets that you'd like to scatter in your procedurally generated environment. Now let's show you how to actually set this up. And this is pretty simple. So we'll hide this for now. And we're gonna start with just a simple plane. So I'll click Shift A and I'll add in a plane. I'll scale this up a bit and I'll also subdivide it a bit. So I'll tab into edit mode, right click and subdivide. So now we want to switch to the geometry node editor. And with this selected, we can click new. Now in here, you wanna click Shift A and we wanna add in a distribute points on faces node. We'll put that in between here. And then we want to click Shift A in here. We want to add in a instance on points node. Now you see our plane disappears when we set that up. So let me just move these down and we can search for a join geometry. Put it at the end here. And then we can connect our geometry from the group input right into here. So now our plane is back and we have a simple little node set up where we're going to distribute points on the faces of this plane, and then we're going to instance some object on these points. And you see this instance socket here. Anything that we plug into here will be distributed onto this plane. So this is where you take your assets, and you want to make sure that you put them in a collection. So again, you right-click New Collection, place all the assets in that collection. So here's flowers, grass, and trees. So let's drag in grass to start. Just take this collection, drag it straight into here. And then we can connect the geometry to the instance. So now you'll see our grass being distributed onto the plane. And if for any reason the object is sort of floating off the plane, you can set this to relative. And then make sure in the collection itself, these objects are, you see if I grab these specific objects, it's going to move all these collections. So make sure these are all together. See if you have one way over here, you could have some offset. So I just like putting them in the center at the world origin. So if we come over to the distribute on faces, you're gonna see a density slider. We can crank that up. And I won't put this all the way up just so that my blender doesn't lag at all, but here's around 500 and you can see looking pretty good. You can also scale these instances here. You have an individual vector value for this. So if you wanted to, you can type in just a value node to control them all and then type in something like two. You can also give them a randomized scale. So if I wanted to make sure that all of these instances are scaled at a random value, so some of the graphs will be taller than others, then I can shift A and add in a random value. And then for this min max, I can take the maximum and I can type in a combine XYZ. So this will set the maximum to like 0.2. So if you want the tallest value to be one, the minimum value to be like 0.2, can do that you can control this all from here so yeah pretty simple this is the basics of our scatter now what we need to do is just set this up so that we can control all of these parts and add in some more assets like our flowers and our trees so what i'm going to do is select all this i'm going to click Control j just to frame this section and then we can click on the node tab if you're not seeing this click n and then i'll just name this grass now let's Shift select all these and then I'll just shift D and then I'll rename this to flowers. So all we need to do is come down to this collection info and just change this to the flowers collection. And then we need to add this into the group input and join it to the geometry. So first 
join geometry. Second, to make this easier, you can shift and then hold down right click and just drag like this. It'll create a little connector socket and you can just place the distribute points on faces right there. This density is really high like the grass. Let's bump this down to something like 100, maybe even 50, depending on how many flowers you want. And again, if they're sort of straying away from the path, make sure you go into the flowers collection and just make sure they're set in the same world location like this. And again, we'll do the exact same thing. Shift D and we'll name this trees. And so this doesn't lag. I'll preset the density to something like 12. And then it's just connecting sockets. So yeah, really easy to set this up. It's just a simple little scatter with your geometry nodes. And again, join geometry so we can see the trees. And of course, make sure that the trees are selected here in the collection. So for some reason, we have a negative value there. We'll go ahead and fix that. So yeah, pretty simple. Again, you can control everything from here, like your seed. And I'm going to show you how we can connect this to the group input. So you can control all those specific values straight from the modifier. But this is your basic little setup. And again, it's going to depend on the specific environment you're creating. Maybe you want to have some randomization in the rotation. Maybe you want to control certain things. And I'll show you at the end some ways to do that. In my version that's built into my Director 3D plugin, I built in this fog example. So there's tons of room to work with and go in and add different features that you can check on and off for your own environment. You can also transform these individually. So say, for example, you don't want the grass going through the plane. Shift A. We can add in a transform node between the collection and the instance. And then we can just translate this 0.02 so that it's sitting at the top. So yeah, pretty simple. Let's go in here and talk about some more things you can do with this. Now, if you want to change the material of the plane, and I'm going to show you a bit how we can use any shape. So if you want mountains, if you want hills, and you just want to procedurally generate on that landscape, you can easily transfer it onto any landscape. But in terms of material, just go to the beginning where your group input is, and we can add in a set material node. Place it right there. And then you can set up any material you want. So I already grabbed this ground material from polyhaven.com. You can also get any HDRIs if you want for some nice realistic reflections. So now let's set this up so that we can control everything from the modifiers. So we want to control the ground material. So just connect this to the group input like this. And now you'll see it pop straight up into your modifier. You can change everything directly from here without having to come in and sift through all these nodes. So let's select this group input and shift D just so we can move it over here. And let's connect some useful things like the density. We'll take the density. And another thing I should mention, you guys can change this to the Poisson disk if you want more direct control of the density. So this can have a distance in between so that there's nothing pressed together. And then you can still control the density from this slider and the density factor. So that's an option if you'd like. But again, connect your density into here. And then we can go to the group tab right there. And then you can rename this however you want. So I'll name this grass density. And then we'll just connect all these densities to the group input and then rename them. So that's your most basic setup. Any value that you find useful, such as rotating, translating, anything. Again, it depends on your environment. Connect that to the group input and you can change things around. Now let me show you an alternate method. If you don't want to transfer this onto any type of landscape, you just want everything as a flat plane, then instead of connecting from the group input, you see it's connected straight from our geometry here. You can instead search for a grid and you want to select the second one and just put it like that. So that way you can control how this generates directly from the grid. You see, as I change these, it's going to dynamically generate everything based on the grid. If you just want a quick sort of slider, grid is nice for this. I like using it from the direct geometry because that allows us to transfer this onto any landscape and it allows us to use weight painting, which is really useful. So for example, let's start with weight painting. Say you want to pick exactly on this plane where the trees are going to be. Well, what you can do, let's turn this off for now. You can select your landscape. You can go up to weight paint mode and you can just draw where you want the trees to be. So say we want a tree here, here, here. Once you've done that, come over to the object data properties and you're going to see it sets up this new vertex group. So I'll name this trees here. 
So now let's go back to object mode, go back to our modifiers and turn this back on. So for all of these density values, if you want to place the tree density only where that weight paint is, we could just click this button for the tree and then type in right here, trees here. And if you're still not seeing those pop up, what you can do is let's go down to the trees, let's change this to the Poisson disc, and this will give you more density controls. So we'll place the density factor into our group input. And then to give us more control over the density with that custom selection, we can place the density max here. So I'll name this tree area, and then I'll name this tree density. So now if we pump up the density, it's going to increase the amount of trees, but it's only going to be in that area that we weight painted. So this is pretty cool. It allows you custom selection of where you want these to be. And again, you can even go straight into weight paint mode from here and just draw on the trees and you're going to see them dynamically pop up. So this method allows you to fully sculpt the scene using things like that. Now let me show you how we can use any landscape. Say you don't want this flat plane. You want to add some shapes and you want to add some realistic hills and shapes to your scene. So if you guys didn't know, if you go up to edit preferences and in your add on section, there's a free plugin called landscape. It should come with all blenders. Make sure you check that on if you want to use this. Once you check that on, you can click shift a and then under mesh, you can create a landscape right here. Let me hide this for now. And then let me re put in the landscape to get that menu back up. So here's our menu and you can control what landscape you want straight from the menu. So you can change the noise type, maybe something like noise rocks. You can change the seed of it to get some different variations of that. And you can go in and change all the specifics. This is fine for me. I'm just going to scale this up and then we'll move this over. Because we've already created this geometry node setup, we can go ahead and name this forest generator. And we'll click on our new landscape. We'll go to add modifier geometry nodes, and you can just select forest generator straight from that dropdown. And again, if everything sort of shifted over, you just want to make sure that all these individual parts are over top where you want. So I'll grab my flower objects. And I'll just click G and then Y to move them over. So now, as you see, we have it on our custom landscape and we have our exact same controls. So I can bump back up the grass density, turn on our flowers, and then we can turn on our trees or use that weight painting if you'd like. If you'd like to expand this without having to scale it, you can easily do that with an array modifier. Pretty simple. Just make sure the order of the array modifier is before the geometry nodes. So that is our basic setup. Again, this is a tutorial on making any environment, not just a forest. So experiment with this setup by interchanging the asset collections to make anything you really want. You can build on this node tree to add extra features unique to your environment. Like for example, in my plugin for the fog, I used geometry nodes to create some rotating planes with a fog shader and then connected it all to my master node tree with a Boolean so I could check it on or off. If we take a look at some procedurally generated plugins like this crowd plugin, you can see there's a lot of other things you can add in, like the ability to instance on curves. So you can draw the instances straight onto any surface. You can even build extra processes like, for example, procedurally generating the specific buildings or the trees then plugging them into my environment setup. That'll allow you to make things modular and change buildings or environment parts on the fly to get infinite possibilities. This also works with animated objects in a collection. For example, if I was trying to make procedural crowds, like in that plugin I showed, I could get some animated walking characters easily from Mixamo, then add them into the collection like I did with everything else. The only difference is that you have to join the individual parts of the animated mesh first and then drag them out of the collection and back in to relink them with the armature. Of course, depending on the thing you're making, you're going to have to tailor the node setup to meet your specific need. So as an example, if I was making the crowds, I could add control to shape them or change their path. And again, you can do that with any animated models like cars, wires between buildings, whatever. If you guys enjoyed, slap like on the video. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more useful tutorials. Comment down below anything you'd like to see next. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.